morning. Fence video time. I've been promising this for a long time. Before I start this video, I just want to remind you guys, make sure you click subscribe. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hate it, click the hate button, thumbs down. That's fine. I'm about to go ahead and write our first thousand dollar check in a few days to you guys. All you have to do, we're giving away a thousand dollars a month for the next five months, be a subscriber and go to the link in the description below. There'll be a web page, and on that page, you'll see sign up for the email list. We use that to generate a random number generator. It's not for marketing. All that system does is when I post an article or video, it sends you an email saying, hey, this idiot's posted another video. That's all it does. And don't forget, we'll have an updated Bermuda long guide for you guys, including a bunch of new stuff for the spring and a couple of tips about killing some lagging weeds once the weather turns cold. We'll be covering that too. So let's get going with this video. Morning, custom built fence. I've been promising this video for a while and everybody loves my fence. All the neighbors love it. Everyone that sees it loves this fence. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna show you how this fence is made. And I'm actually gonna go back in time. So months ago, earlier this year, we had the fence constructed. So I'm going to steal some of those clips that I've saved from the construction and cut in here. So excuse if there's any jumpiness, there's nothing I can do about it. I gotta make it this way. This fence is called a six plus one. So it's a six foot privacy fence with a one inch, I call it a mission style slat topper. That's what I call it. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna break it down and show you it looks complex, but it really isn't. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want my general contractor to replicate this same sort of fence down at the beach house. And unless you see how it's built, you kind of look at it and go, how'd they do that? So we're gonna do that today. Now, let's, before we start, let's talk about the footings. And this is important. I'm not gonna get into a discussion about which footings are best or how to set the post. The standard way to set a post is you take an auger or a post hole digger, you dig down 36 inches, then you fill some of that back in with dirt and get your post level, and then you pour a X amount of concrete. Um, I do recommend that if you use concrete that you put a little bit extra and try and get where it meets the post, put it at an angle. And what that does is if you have it flat or concave, you'll have water pool up that'll go down into the fence and cause it to rot. But if you have that concrete meet the fence and sort of go afterwards and do sort of a scalloping around it, shaping, a shaping around it, it'll, it'll shed that water. Now people are gonna say you should use an insert, you should use vinyl, whatever. I'm just telling you how this fence was made and there's a reason I'm talking about footings. I'm glad I called the zoning and code office down there at the beach where we have their house because they have it different. They have it where you have to have an 18 inch wide hole by 24 inch deep for fence posts. <laughs> so I'm like, man, I really don't like that. I actually think this is a much better system to keep the hole narrow and go deeper than to go wide um, but you got to do what you got to do and when you get your fence permit down there they have to inspect the holes before you actually go do the construction so always check with your local and ask questions talk to them ask questions most places require a fence permit check with your hoa are there any restrictions on your fence so that's step number one so step number two uh, find someone that has a good website and has a good reputation and that kind of knows what they're doing. Remember, we had to have the, this whole fence taken down and that was almost, what, two 30-yard dumpsters that they had to bring in and actually take the old fence down. It's not just a new construction. So that had to be thought about. So I'll walk you through this process and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the back side of the fence now, typically, this is the pretty side of the fence. So the pretty side of the fence will actually face, like if you have a street front, would face the street front. Um, so you, the ugly would be in, but the pretty side back here, since we have all woods, is all facing us. Um, it's kind of common that the pretty side will face the fence on that side of the house. So to kind of understand what we did here and what they do, since I have a six plus one plus a little bit extra for the caps, these are caps. I'll put a link in the description below. I'll link to these caps. 
These are just accessory caps that you can buy. You put a little carpenter's glue on it and stick it on top of the post. Um, so you have to have six feet of, of this is a four by four pressure treated. By the way, this wood is all pressure treated. Um, it has that yellow look to it. I hate to call it yellow wood because I don't think it was, but it was all from the same manufacturer. And it, that's, I think, important to have your wood match. Um, four by four post. So I've got six foot of post another foot and then a little bit more plus my depth. So I think these were close to probably 12 foot, probably post here. Now down at the beach, I think we can get away with 10 footers because if we only have to go maybe 24, if that down, then we'll have, so we have two feet, six feet, one foot, and then a little bit up above. I don't know, we'll have to see. So every single um, intersection has a four by four. Now, when you have a large gate or all the gates, actually, when you have gates, these are actually six by sixes because gates have to bear the weight of a swinging fence. So wherever you have a gate, they're using, we're using six by six. Okay, this is a better example over here. So we have a four by four post here. We have a four by four post. They're approximately eight feet spaced apart. Then what they do is they come in and measure and they put a two by four, a two by four, and a two by four. These two by fours meet in the middle here. So they would put one up and once they put it up, they would actually cut it if it was long. They would come up here and put it here and then they would come over here and then cut this in so that they would have enough to butt, butt up another one here. They did that about a foot from the bottom, close to the middle and then right about the top, which is enough just to cover these boards, you'll understand why in a minute. And then they put another one up at the top. So we have one, two, three, four, two by fours going across this way. Now, when you get to a four by four or corner, they actually butt nail this in right here. So this is actually butted into, it's not on top, it's actually butted into this. I wanted to make that point clear. All right, so next, the next thing they do, so once they get that up, the next thing they do is they come by with these, I guess you'd call them standard, they're sort of dog-eared boards, and I've got footage of it. And what they do is, is they just visually guess, they line these things up, they don't use a spacer and they sort of space them so that there's about a what's that maybe a three inch a sort of a three inch gap here in between <clears throat> but what they don't want is they don't want to have to cut one of these boards where it hits this post so they visually adjust each section so this section might be two and three quarters this might be two and seven eighths it's never going to be exact they just visually space these boards out evenly that's what they do next. Maybe you can see it here. So what they've done is they put a board, 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 spaced them out, and then they come back with a board on top of this, and a board on top of this, and then a board on top of this. So this is board on board construction. All right, so once you have all these face boards on here, on the fence, then the next thing is, is these little, um, slats up here now i believe they call this this measures like one and three eighths but they actually call it a two uh, i think it's a two by two and they put them all together and they cut them like all at once and then so they nail these on and these are spaced with an actual two by four so i have some footage of that of him putting a two by four spacing these and nailing them up so once these are on then they come by with a facing board and the facing board is a, is a, I guess, I think that's like a one by three. It's a one by three where they just come across here and come across here and nail that across just to cover up everything else. So, again, this backside, the only thing on this backside really you would consider is just the two by fours. So you have one, two, three, four. All the other wood application really is done on the front. So again, when you come up here, and I'll show this to you, all these boards are spaced out. They just sort of estimate, and they sort of stand back and look at it and adjust them. 
then they nail them. Then they come back, you'll have holes, and then they lay these boards on top. Then they come back and then they nail these boards in, spacing them out, and then they put a fascia board on, and then they put the then they come in, and what they do is they cut this with a chainsaw, cut that across with a chainsaw, and then put the cap on top. Now, I will say on the fence, if you have a double gate like this, this is a large double gate, they would actually build this gate in place whole and then attaching it with the um, the hinges and this whole thing would be whole and then what they would do is they would come up here and cut that with a chainsaw and that way it'd be perfectly square and hanging correctly. That, my friends, is a fence post. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. You can see, we sort of did a little bit of a, a little bit of an angle on this fence. And there's a reason why, and that's because of one of the valve stations. More wood, and more wood, and more wood. All right, so the next step, laying out all these boards, spacing them. Uh, and this will be the first board. This board will get nailed on, and then the second board will be an overlap okay. board. So, here's a good note. Not all these boards are gonna be spaced exactly the same based on, let me give you an example. So this section here might be a little bit off from another section. So what he's doing is he's dividing those out evenly, trying to get them. So this section may be three inches. That section might be three and a quarter because you don't want to end up with a section that looks stupid at the end of that row. Okay, just so you can see what I'm talking about here. So the first board gets put up, gets cut, second board gets put up. These are just butt, nailed in, butt, nailed in. Onto the 4x4, four four. that 4x4 four four goes in here. When you come to an end, this is on top of this right here. And then we're going to butt, then we butt nail it right into this one. Interesting construction note on the gate. I want to get this on camera. The gate is up here almost permanently. So it's fixed into this big six by six post. Everything is square. And then you cut it after you put your hinges on. Like I said, this has like a lattice at the top, kind of a mission. Pressure treated one by ones here. And then those are just being spaced with a two by four and being nailed up. Okay, the 
And so these are the little copper pre-made end caps. Maybe I'll put a link to these if I can find them. And then those, once the posts are cut down, will go on top of the posts. Blue skies shining on me. Nothing but blue skies. It's supposed to be thunderstorms. We had the clouds roll through, and guess what? No rain. Hallelujah. So let me show you this board on board sort of styling that's being done. So this is the board on board. So you saw the board spaced. And then this is the front now. So this is what it looks like on the front. You got it? Just so you know. So you have one board nailed here, space, another board, and then another board on top. And that's how you get that sort of, I don't want to call it a shadow box, uh, but that's how you get that depth effect on there. It's almost like, man, it's almost like I need to have someone come by with a wire brush to just take that. I guess a pressure washer will take that off. Okay, so I hope you grasp the general concept of this fence. Let me just show you one more time. I'm gonna show you the back versus front right next to each other. So this is the quote unquote back. This is the ugly side. So you have one, two, three, four, two by fours on the back. Everything is applied to the back. Everything is applied to the front side. This board is a two by four. This is a two by four. Now we go to the front. And now this is the front. So obviously you don't see, this is a good comparison that this is the back, this is the front. Board on board, board, space, board, nail board on top, nail board on top. To dress the front, once that's done, one by three and one by three. Now I will tell you that your fence, when it's made, should follow the terrain of the land and when you do that sometimes you might have some of these picket or dog ear boards that are too high and they came by with a skill saw and just ran across and cut them just so you know pickets are on there caps are on there uh we came back a couple days later and we power washed the entire fence to remove a lot of this dust and some of the just dirt that um, gets on it we waited till we had about three or four days of nice dry weather. And then we came back with a hybrid stain. Now your hybrid stain, um, you do not have to have a certain level of humidity on your boards, unlike an oil-based stain. So matter of fact, they even tell you, you can come back the day after a rain and apply this stain. It's a hybrid Olympic. Um, it's the only stain I use and I use the honey color. And I did a staining video. So if you wanna know more about that stain, but a lot of people say you have to wait a month or two months. No, you don't. Not if you use a hybrid, which is designed to be put on. It actually goes on better when the, when the board is actually a little bit wet. We actually, on the video, I actually show you, I take a hose and I spray the fence and wet it down a little bit. Then I apply the stain. People are like, what? You have to understand the Olympic hybrid stain. So uh, that's it. This was a long time ago and the fence still looks fantastic. I will restain this probably next summer. We'll put another light coat on because we put on light coats. 
Uh, we'll come back, what we'll do is we'll pressure wash it lightly and we'll put another coat of stain on it and that'll be it for about four years probably. Hope that helped. Hit subscribe and I'll talk to you later. Tag.